recovery. But another point here is Trey Knox has had a sophomore slump so far with the Razorbacks. So I think he's going to get a little bit of a bigger role in the offense as he had a pretty good freshman year. And it's going to be interesting to see how that plays in as he was really good. And I think a lot of people were disappointed that he really hasn't seen that role with the Razorbacks. He had two potential catches in the Auburn game, which one of them would have tied up the game in a hypothetical scenario where he catches the two point conversion, but he dropped it. And then he had another key drop. I think it was a third down. So he kind of just didn't get enough playing time after that. However, with Warren being out for the season with an ACL injury, I think Knox could step up. I'll talk about that more, though, on the LSU preview as Arkansas is going to try to get that boot there. But another thing is Arkansas benched their starters towards the end of the game. You're getting beat by Florida, a really good team, bad. No reason to risk and put those guys out there and risk injuries, as we saw a couple dudes get injured. But KJ Jefferson had his second touchdown of his career, and I just thought I'd throw that out there. He had three rushing attempts for eight yards, so... Just thought I'd toss it out there as you know, you were talking about the the future of this program and it's really up to KJ Malik or one of the freshmen Rogers or Coley who we're going to bring in next year. But obviously for Pittman to get his recruits and guys he likes a ton is awesome because I don't, I'm not a big believer in the star recruit program. Neither. I don't think stars determine how good somebody is. I think anybody that a coach brings in, I, I'm going to be happy with. I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm not a scout. I don't evaluate talent on professional NCAA teams. I think stars are just a way of like putting 2000 high school kids together. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And you look at offer sheets more than anything. And a lot of these guys have strong offer sheets. And obviously if, if one of them sees something in them, you know, I'm going to go in head and trust that system. Yeah, for sure. I hate the Stars rating system, too, because some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL today were like two, three-star prospects. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo, who plays for the San Francisco 49ers, just played in a Super Bowl last season, was like a two-star prospect. Patrick Mahomes was a three-star prospect. That star rating is just so focused on the physical ability. But what you can't manage, and during the Florida-Arkansas game, Dan Orlovsky was talking about this, too. It's the mental aspect of it. And that's what we see with Kyle Trask, who was a three-star quarterback coming out of Florida. His one option was Florida, the one D1 option, career backup. And now he's a potential Heisman winning quarterback. He has the mental ability. He reads the defenses so well. And that is what makes a good football player at any position. It's the mental aspect, the stuff that stars can't rate. You can rate somebody off their insane mobility, their great arm strength, but if they can't read a defense at a quarterback position, or they can't run a good route at the wide receiver, or they can't read the de- the quarterback's eyes as a safety or a corner, it's all about the mental game. And that's what, when looking into the NFL too, comparing that to Patrick Mahomes really knows how to read a defense. But you look at a guy like who came into the NFL with far more heart than Mahomes did. It's like a guy like Sam Darnold, who I'm also a big New York Jets fan. Everybody pray for me with that. But Sam Darnold, when you watch him play, he can't read the defense. That's the biggest thing. Sam Darnold was a highly touted third overall pick. Patrick Mahomes was a wild chance taken by the Kansas City Chiefs. Look where they are now. Yeah, 100%. I mean, stars really don't mean anything if you don't have that mental aspect to get out on the field and compete. High school ball is a total different level from any D1 level or NFL, you know, NFL level. Like you're saying you got to be able to step up mentally and perform in those key situations because you can do all you want on the field. But if your team is counting on you and you fail, you're going to play out of your starting time. And yep. for a lot of these prospects that Pittman's bringing in, Um, You know, they may not have that star level that is going to get them on the front headlines of 247 sports or rivals or whatever, but they're going to bring, you know, promise and play their best at this Razorback program, which I'm looking forward to. But the defense got demolished. Obviously, Barry Odom was the interim head coach as Sam Pittman tested positive for COVID-19 before this game. Pittman will be back on the facilities tomorrow on Wednesday. But the defense got demolished. Odom was on the sideline for this, and I really don't think it changed anything for him personally. I just don't see a scenario where like something majorly happened. Because in my opinion, I'll just give all the credit to Florida's offense. And Kyle Trask has to be the favorite for the Heisman. Obviously, technically in the Vegas odds, he's fourth right now behind Jones, Fields, and Jones, Fields, and Trevor Lawrence. He's fourth. 
but he was benched in the fourth quarter and had 356 yards and six touchdowns. Yeah, Cal Trask is just amazing. And the reason people give so much hype to those other three guys that you mentioned, Mac Jones, Justin Fields, and Trevor Lawrence, is because those are the brand names of college football. Mac Jones is the quarterback of the biggest dynasty of you and you and myself's lives. Trevor Lawrence is going to be the probably the first overall pick to the New York Jets. And Justin Fields is a dynamic, dominant dual threat. But what Kyle Trask is doing right now is breaking the records of the guy that was the first overall pick last year in Joe Burrow. He is demolishing Joe Burrow's records right now. And when you look at the other three guys... And he's playing a... My bad. And he's playing an SEC schedule. I just want to throw that out there. Exactly. You compare the records of guys like Burrow, who was playing... Um, I'm trying to think of like some team, but you know what I'm talking about, like FCS and all that kind of stuff. Something like that. They're playing some bad school and Trask is doing this 10 games, all SEC schedule with no fall camp. That's just very impressive. And I think, I think a lot of people also discredit Trask because of the loss to Texas A&M early in the season. But there's two things I want to say about that. Kyle Trask did not lose that game against Texas A&M. The defense did. Kyle Trask played an amazing football game. Him and Kellen Mond were going blow for blow, but all it took was one fumble by Malik Davis and the defense to continue to not step up in that game for A&M to get that win. And also, it's because Kyle Trask, everyone believes, is not is not as flashy as everybody else is. I mean, Justin Fields is a super hyper-athlete hap- mobility. Trevor Lawrence has a little bit of mobility. Mac Jones plays for Alabama, the big brand name. Kyle Trask, he's not the flashy run around you kind of guy. He's just a guy that's going to zip it past three defenders if he wants to. That's what Kyle Trask is doing. And that he is getting so little talk is just unbelievable to me. And that I know I'm a Florida fan. That's going to sound biased. But this is just strictly a football guy talking mm-hmm. here. I, I totally you- agree with everything you said there. And another thing I just wanted to throw out there is mm-hmm. a lot of these guys have had the hype since they came out of high school. Trevor Lawrence... High, highly touted prospect. Mac Jones wasn't as highly touted as the others, but you know you can put him up there in a conversation. Tre- um, Justin Fields, highly touted, went to Georgia and transferred to Ohio State. And the thing, Thank I would really like to see Florida win the SEC championship just so Kyle Trask can get that like platform and get into the college football playoff and really show the college football world his talent. Absolutely, yeah. And that was kind of the thing too. I mean, Ohio State was off. Due to COVID, their game got canceled against Maryland, which would have been a really fun game, in my opinion. Um, you also had Trevor Lawrence, who's been out two games with COVID. You've had Matt Jones, who was didn't play, who's not going to play for a while because of COVID, with running through Alabama and LSU's programs. Kyle Trask had the national spotlight on him, and he balled out against Arkansas. I think that's going to open a lot of people's eyes and look at what Kyle Trask is doing right now, and be like, "All right, this guy's doing something special." And I feel like, like you mentioned, the SEC championship game will most likely pit Florida against Alabama. If Kyle Trask goes out there and beats Alabama, now honestly, I don't think he will. I just don't think Florida has the defense to stop Alabama. But if somehow Kyle Trask goes out there and does what he has been doing to Alabama and gets Florida to the playoffs, he's got to win the Heisman. I mean, the dude, is that's just unbelievable. You you don't beat Alabama in those big games. You don't beat Nick Saban in those big games. Yeah, I, I totally feel you. And, you know, I, I'm just going to throw this out there because you were on the topic of Heisman and being snubbed. Darren McFadden was snubbed from the Heisman when Tim Tebow Oh, went. come on now, man. Come on I, now. I, 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 I just had to throw that out there. And, but I think that has I think that has to do with, um, you know, being, being a – powerhouse and being the better team as Florida was the better team in that time obviously though the refs Mark Curls we, we don't need to get there we don't need to get there today. <laughs> no, we don't I'm gonna start there. crying here I'm gonna start crying here but the thing is I saw from Florida I feel like a lot of these guys I never heard of obviously Kyle Pitts is out for the game with a concussion and he's gonna be out against Vanderbilt there was just so many guys I've never heard of who were just catching the ball I, I knew Copeland you guys, I've seen like Copeland and Frank's talk on Twitter, you know, my timeline. Yep. But I I knew Tony a little bit, but I didn't know Henderson, Pierce, Wright, Grimes, all these guys. And the list just keeps going on and on of people that contribute to this Florida offense. And I feel like a thing that elite quarterbacks do, especially in the NFL and top college teams, is they elevate the talent around them. Absolutely. And Kyle Trask did that on Saturday. 
Absolutely. With Kyle Pitts being gone, this offense is different because Kyle Pitts may be the most unguardable football player in the country. He's six foot mm. six. He's got elite speed and he's a great blocker. I feel like whatever team gets lucky enough to be able to draft him in this upcoming draft is going to be getting a special football player. But that's the thing, like you mentioned, he's out for the next two. This for out for Arkansas is going to be out for Vanderbilt. That Kyle Trask was able to still throw six touchdown passes to all these guys, like you mentioned, Trayvon Grimes. He threw one to Justin Shorter, which was a beautiful catch, by the way. Threw one to Jacob Copeland. Threw two of them to Keon Zipperer, a redshirt freshman tight end that I'll be honest, didn't even hear of before this football game. (laughs) I mean, that's just the craziest stuff. And that's what you mentioned. That's what great quarterbacks do. Quarterbacks make the receivers look good. That's where you kind of see guys were like Peyton Manning and Julius Thomas. I may be saying his name wrong, but he was a tight end for Denver. Immediately when when he leaves Denver, leaves Peyton Manning, the guy falls off a cliff because Peyton Manning made him look good. And that's the thing I feel like what Kyle Trask is doing at Florida. Now, these aren't scrubs that he's throwing to at all. These are four-star, five-star talent. Trayvon Grimes was a five-star receiver, but he transferred from Ohio State due to lack of playing time. Copeland was a five-star prospect, too. These are good, talented guys. But with Kyle Pitts there, the last time Kyle Trask threw six touchdowns, which was against Ole Miss in Week 1, Kyle Pitts caught four of them. I mean, and then this week, you have four of them go to two different guys, Grimes and Zipper, and then you got Copeland. And then you got shorter. It, it's just an unbelievable performance by Kyle Trask. Yeah, and you know that just should just add to his Heisman campaign. Absolutely. Yeah, you, know, you know, obviously, you know, we don't Heisman isn't the topic of the show and all, but uh, I just wanted to say real quick because I forgot to mention it earlier. I think the winner of the SEC championship game will win the Heisman. Not that they should base it off of that. But that that's just what they can that's what the high are gonna, gonna do. do. Yeah, that's what they're gonna yeah, do. Exactly. Because they're gonna look at Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence missed two games because of COVID, and Justin Fields plays in a very weak Big Ten conference. They're gonna look at that SEC championship game. All right, Florida quarterback versus Alabama quarterback. Which name's more appealing to be written on a Heisman trophy? And they're gonna go with whoever wins that football game. Exactly. But just, you know, to go a little bit off of Arkansas. The defensive line couldn't create any pressure for us. We were rushing three, dropping eight, four, dropping seven. It just didn't, just couldn't create any pressure. And then obviously the defensive backs couldn't hold at all. The guy who got three interceptions, though, against Ole Miss's quarterback, Matt Corral, Hudson Clark, he did not play good at all. And he was benched for the redshirt freshman, Kari Johnson. And it would have been nice to have Jerry Jacobs here, but Jerry Jacobs obviously opted out of the season after he lost that starting position. Arkansas defense, though, was just getting worn down. So we saw a lot of guys that I hadn't even heard of since, like, Balema played, like, yeah. in three years ago. But they were on the field for 38 minutes and 48 seconds. But that is not only contributing to how good Florida's offense is. Arkansas's offense is very fast, tempo, and flashy. Obviously, a lot of the touchdowns were big plays, like big plays from Woods, those two touchdowns there, and then the really long run from Smith. So it has to contribute with multiple things. But there's any positives I'll take away from this game. Obviously, Jalen Catalan has continued his really good career at Arkansas. The redshirt freshman leading that backfield, um, the safety. He had 12 total tackles with 10 in the first half. That's his second game with 10 total tackles in the first half, and then he had two pass deflects. And then Grant Morgan, the one-armed man, had 15 total tackles. (laughs) And I think this may kind of keep Odom a little bit on the down low when it comes to like coaching searches this year. I don't think any like big time programs are going to look at him, but I think a couple G5 schools may try to take a look at him and then be like, oh, you know, Mizzou didn't work out for him there. And he coached his Arkansas game and the defense got demolished. So if there's any positives, we may be able to keep an elite defensive coordinator here for a little bit longer. That's like yeah. the one positive, I guess. <laughs> well, there's a lot of positive that I feel like you Arkansas fans can take from this. Florida's just a buzzsaw right now. I mean, they are possibly, yeah. in my opinion, the hottest team in the country. Ever since that A&M loss and then that long break between that and the Missouri game, this team is just different. If they replayed that game between A&M and Florida right now, I feel like Florida would steamroll them because that's just how hot Florida is right now. So Arkansas was walking into a buzzsaw. And also, I kind of thought there was a little bit too much pressure put on Arkansas because of the big storyline of this game 
being Felipe Franks' return to Florida. I wish, that's a moment I wish the crowd was there for, like a full capacity crowd. 